So the, the second thing, I, I wanted to talk, talk about this transition, this reinvention of self at 36. This wasn't easy for you. I know that there were a lot of things you, you were going through or had already gone through around that time um, that had a big impact on you financially, um, that had a big impact in terms of the, the structure of your family. I, I like to talk about that because I, I, I want people to hear, hear the nuts and bolts of, of, of what you had to go through and how you overcame. Because it wasn't just a matter of saying, oh, I'm interested in this thing, I guess I better take some classes. You had reality right. saying, oh no, this ain't gonna be easy for you in a lot of ways. You know, it's so interesting. Um, I think that it isn't until we look back on our story um, that we can see how much that we sort of had to trans uh, traverse through. The thing that I get excited about today is that I can stand on that story and not in that story, that that does not define me. Um, what I had said earlier is uh, my parents were phenomenal. My mom was my best friend. My dad was my second best friend. And I relied on their strength um, to that allowed me to pursue things, right? Cause, your mom is always in your corner. And uh, when I said that I wanted um, to go back to school, fully support. Um, we lived in Southern California. And then I had this idea that we should move to Atlanta. And 100%, I have no idea where it came from, but there's just this internal voice that says you need to move. So I've got this family of five, and um, my husband at the time, he was originally from Kansas, and he said, California is the place that people move to. Why would we go anywhere else? We're, we're here, we've, we've arrived at this, this place. And, but more importantly, have you been to the South, Naima? Do you know what they do to black people? Like, have you read any of the history? And the thing that I love about myself, um, if there's a, a quality and a characteristic that you could appreciate about yourself, it is that I do not get bogged down by all the details of stuff. Um, I don't get, I don't get overwhelmed by the details and the minutia simply because I probably haven't done the research enough to be able to do it. So there's not this thing that, that, that elicits fear for me because I probably don't know. And I appreciate that about myself because then I'm gonna do it anyways. So I don't know the history, but what this is what I know, that if you follow that internal GPA, GPS, if that internal voice keeps persisting, then I just believe that we should follow it. So it takes me four years to convince him. We finally relocate. My parents are not excited. They were super excited about going back to school, but there's all kinds of schools here. Why can't you just go to school here in California? And so they help and support anyways. They have, uh, my mom comes and helps me pack. We get there 2008, August uh, 8th, January of 2008. We're here in Atlanta and the economy completely falls apart and my husband does not have a job, and he is the breadwinner. And we go from six figures to no income, but certainly we're gonna be fine, you're gonna get another job, it's gonna be okay, to what are we gonna cook for dinner because there's nothing here, to I'm sure we'll find something, we'll find something, and then week after week after week goes by, and it's probably four or five weeks in. There's no income and we literally don't have enough food to make a meal. And I do the thing that I don't wanna do. I go down to the county office and I sit there for eight hours in probably the most humiliating experience up until that point, I had been raised middle class. Um, I didn't have a reference point of what does it look like when you need assistance. And when I left and I was awarded uh, food stamp benefits, um, I felt relieved because I knew that we were going to get assistance. Fast forward when we're in um, Trader Joe's, because we're holistic, right? And I was 
praying to God. I have no idea. I'm praying to God that Trader Joe's is going to accept this food stamp um, card that I have. I don't know for sure. I haven't done the research, but I'm standing in line with my three kids. And the thing that I do not want is for them to know that this is our situation. Because as parents, we do everything that we possibly can to protect them. And I'm mortified. And I'm standing in line and there's something about the Trader Joe's cashier, because he sees the card and he sees the look in, on my face. And he says, hey kids, do you know, have you found the monkey? Because they're always hiding these little stuffed animals and if the kids find it, then they get whatever the treat is, a sticker or something like that. And so he turns to my three kids and he says, have you found the monkey? Can you go find, can you find the monkey? And he takes the card from me super um, conspicuously and he, um, he rings all the items up and I said, thank you. And he said, I understand. It's all right. And it's 2008. There are so many people that are struggling right now. And so his, his compassion, his just ability to empathize with where I was meant so much. And eventually I did have to. Um, we did have to have the conversation with the kids and I was mortified even then. But working through that, going from we've got all of our needs met to how are we going to do this? And in the midst of this, I had decided that I was going back to school. And, and I think that sometimes what we think is we shouldn't pursue our passion or our dream. You need to go get a job. Your kids need food. And if your husband can't get work, then you should go find something. Don't pursue your, your, this passion. And that internal voice said, just keep pushing, just, just keep pushing. And so as a family of five, we lived off of a financial aid check that was made and meant for one student. And so we had to figure out really quickly how to be able to, as Tupac say, make a dollar out of 15 cents, um, how to be able to stretch. And the kids got told no a lot. Kamal wanted to do club soccer, and that would have been possible in California, and it was no longer. And my daughter wanted um, to pursue arts and crafts. She's so super talented, really super creative. The answer was almost always no, right? The kids went to public school, not private school. And there were all these things and, and um, edits that we needed to make so that we could adapt around this new reality.